Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. Till now, I have covered important topics of geomorphology ranging from earth's interior to erosional landforms. There are few important topics like latius, lanes and important river systems across the world and mineral distribution etc. All these topics I will be dealing in a section called world geography after finishing Indian geography. For time being, I will be covering climatology and then oceanography. And once oceanography is done, I'll be dealing with Indian geography. And once Indian geography is done, we'll see, we'll discuss about all the leftover topics of geomorphology, namely plains, plateaus, river systems, etc., and various mineral distributions all across the world as well as India. This will be covered under world geography. In this video, I'll be explaining about latitudes and longitudes, which is forms the fundamental concept of climatology. So understanding latitudes and longitudes is important to better understand climatology. So in this video I will be explaining about heat zones, day and night, seasons and standard time. First what are latitudes and longitudes? Latitudes and longitudes are imaginary lines on the earth's surface. As it said they are imaginary, they don't exist in reality. These are just created for our convenience. Latitudes are horizontal imaginary lines whereas longitudes are vertical imaginary lines. Let's see in detail. Let's look at the comparison between latitudes and longitudes. Latitudes are also called as parallels. That is because each latitude is parallel to parallel with every other latitude. Whereas longitudes are called as meridians. Meridians are simply lines that run from pole to pole. That is from north pole to south pole. These lines just simply join North Pole and South Pole. They are not complete circles uh, like uh, latitudes. Latitudes are part of complete circles that uh, circle around the Earth along its surface. Whereas the longitudes are simply a line joining North and South Pole. Latitudes are measured as angular distance of a point from the center of the Earth. That is angular distance from the center of the Earth. This is the center of the Earth. From here we measure the angular distance from this center and this angular distance specifies uh, the position of certain latitudes and the longitudes are angular distance along the equator but while taking while measuring longitudes we take the angular distance along the equator that is you know that this is the equator so the longitudes are measured as angular distance with along the equator and the equator is called zero degree latitude and it is the biggest latitude. It cuts the earth into two equal halves, that is two equal hemispheres. For example, this is one first uh, northern hemisphere, this is southern hemisphere. And the equator is the biggest circle that cuts the earth into northern and southern hemispheres. Whereas the prime meridian is zero degree longitude. It passes through London, a village called Greenwich. Hence this is called as prime meridian which is taken as a reference meridian unlike latitudes this is not a complete circle this is simply a line joining north and south poles latitudes are named south and north of equator that is when we consider a certain latitude we name it by telling it's either its location is north of the equator or south of the equator for example if this is 10 degrees it makes 10 degree angle with the center of the earth then it is called as 10 degree north latitude and the same thing if it's uh, in the south of the equator then it's called as 10 degrees south latitude and longitudes are named east or west of prime meridian for example all along the equator this angular distance is made by a longitude and let this longitude be about 30 degree or a 40 degree longitude then we call it east of the prime meridian and if the same thing is west of the prime meridian then we name it as 30 degree west of prime meridian and as we have said equator has the maximum length whereas in longitudes all longitudes are equal in length you can see that equator is the longest uh, is the longest uh, latitude whereas when we move upwards towards the north pole or towards the south pole we see that the latitudes become shorter and shorter and at North Pole, it becomes simply a point. Even this is an example for latitude, which is a point latitude. That is, in North Pole, it is simply, latitudes are simply a point. 
both at north pole and south pole but if you take a uh, take a look at longitudes they are the same they are equal in length all the longitudes are equal in length and they connect south pole and north poles and the important latitudes are tropic of cancer which is 23 and a half degree north so somewhere here 23 and a half degree north it runs to india it cuts india into nearly two equal halves and the other one is tropic of cancer which is 23 and a half degree south latitudes other one is arctic circle and antarctic circle which are respectively 66 and a half degree north and south latitudes and the north pole and south pole which are point latitudes which are the extreme ends of a latitudes that is they are the point latitudes and the important longitudes are primary meridian which is zero degree longitude and the other one which is exactly on the opposite side of this meridian is called as international date line it is 180 degree east or west longitude these two longitudes are important we'll see why and the, we there is a purpose why these imaginary lines are drawn and let's see why they these how these things help first thing longitudes help in determining the intensity of sunlight received at a point uh, we'll see in detail uh, in, uh, in the later part of the video they divide earth, earth into torrid temperate and frigid zones we'll see this in later part of the video and the longitudes are used to determine time and date and both these longitudes and latitudes are important in determining the location of a point on the earth hence the main purpose of longitudes and latitudes is to determine or specify the location of a point let us first take a look at different motions of earth the first important motion is rotation where earth rotates along an axis that runs from north pole to south pole the other important kind of motion is revolution where earth revolves around the sun around the sun in a fixed orbit which is elliptical in shape it is not circular but elliptical and this plane in which earth revolves is called as orbital plane and earth makes an angle of 66 and half degree or the axis makes an angle of 66 and half degree with the orbital orbital plane hence the earth is said to be tilted by an angle of 23 and half degree earth takes about 24 hours to complete one full one full rotation to be precise it is 23 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds likewise earth takes about 365 days to complete one full revolution and precisely it's 365 uh, days and 6 hours or 365.24 days that is for convenience we exclude this extra 6 hours we consider a year as only 365 days likewise in uh, when come when he, when it comes to rotation we complete we take that the earth rotates in 24 hours instead of 23 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds and this surplus 6 hours is compensated uh, by every 4 years we with a year called leap year where the year has 366 days 16 16 to 4 will give rise to nearly 23.99 something hours that is one full day Hence, this one day is adjusted uh, during an year called leap year, which has 366 days. The one day is adjusted to uh, as 29th day of February in that year. So, for con for convenience, we have excluded the extra hours, and finally, uh, to make up uh, for the error, we have added the same extra surplus uh, time, uh, giving rise to a leap year. And these motions of Earth, namely rotation and revolution, are the major factors which influence climatic conditions on Earth. As these motions are associated with differential reception of sun's energy, the climatic factors on Earth seem to be uh, completely dependent on these motions along with the spherical shape of the Earth. For example, Earth being a sphere, there is differences in amount of heat energy received at different curvatures. For example, at the equator, which faces directly towards the sun, the heat energy is received is higher, whereas at the poles, Due to curvature, the poles face towards certain uh, much different direction, come not and not towards the sun. As a result, apparently it looks like sun sun's rays are slant. As a result, these polar regions receive less amount of heat, and this differential heat reception is the main uh, factor behind various climatic conditions like precipitation, uh, cyclones, anti cyclones, jet streams, etc. So. Finally, climatic conditions directly or indirectly depend on dependent on 
both the movements of earth or the motions of earth as well as the shape of the earth and days are a direct consequence of rotationary motion of earth and a seasons are direct consequence of consequences of revolutionary motion of the earth where the earth is tilted by a certain angle that is the axis makes certain angle with the orbital plane these two factors greatly influence the amount of insulation or the amount of heat uh, sun sun's heat energy received we'll see this further let's first look at heat zones of the earth heat zones mainly depend on the amount of insulation the or the amount of sun's energy received at different latitudes for example the latitudes around the equator receive direct sunlight sunlight as the curvature here is directly facing towards the sun and apparently sun sun's rays looks direct whereas in this part the curvature is facing towards this uh, this direction as a result the sun's rays in the higher latitude seems to be slant or covering a large amount of area as a result the heat reception is comparatively lower in the higher latitudes hence these regions are comparatively less hot uh, compared to the equator based on this differential uh, reception of sun's light there are different temperate zones uh, that is zones of heat zones which are uh, part of earth for example torrid zone is the zone between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn where sun's rays is first directly at least once in a year the other one is temperate zone and there are two temperate zones one in the north and one in the south the north one is called north temperate zone and the other one is south temperate zone there are regions between tropic of cancer and arctic circle in the northern hemisphere and tropic of capricorn and antarctic circle in the southern hemisphere these regions receive slightly slant rays due to their curvature that is the shape of the earth as a result these ray the, the temperatures in these regions are comparatively less uh, lesser uh, when compared to the equator as a result these regions are called temperate zones where temperatures are moderate and in the next zone that is frigid zone uh, which is part of Ar arctic and antarctic circle they are very cold because of very least amount of sun's energy received here that is sun's rays are very slant and as a result the amount of energy received per area is very low and hence the temperatures here are extreme that is very low so we know that days are mainly days and nights are mainly due to rotation of earth uh, in along its own axis that is north south axis but we also know that during different parts of the different different times of the year the day the length of day and night varies so let's see why this variation occurs first let's study seasons to understand these variations seasons are a direct consequence of revolutionary motion of earth where earth revolves around the sun uh, with a fixed position of its axis we see that the position of the axis is fixed in all these uh, positions that is the angle it makes with the orbital plane remains same and also its directions re uh, direction remains same on 21st june that is when northern hemisphere is facing the sun the northern hemisphere receives direct sunlight due to this tilt tilted position otherwise equator has to receive direct sunlight as it is the central part of the uh, earth it is as uh, the central position of the earth but due to this tilt northern hemisphere faces the direct sunlight and the southern hemisphere and the equator receives slightly slant sun uh, sun, uh, sun rays as a result it is summer in northern hemisphere and winter in southern hemisphere and this position is called as summer solstice for northern hemisphere and winter solstice for southern hemisphere and exact opposite position occurs on 22nd of december where the southern hemisphere receives direct sunlight and the northern hemisphere uh, northern hemisphere receives indirect sunlight as a result it will be summer in southern hemisphere and winter in northern hemisphere as this position position becomes winter solstice for the northern hemisphere and summer solstice for southern hemisphere and during other months is in on 21st march and 23rd september both southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere receives slant sunlight whereas the equator receives direct sunlight that is in both position equator receives direct sunlight northern and southern hemispheres receive slant sunlight as a result the temperatures in both northern and southern hemisphere remains the same whereas at the equator the temperatures are extreme and these seasons are called as uh, this position is called as equinox for the northern hemisphere the month of uh, the the day 21st march will be spring equinox and for southern hemisphere it is it will be autumn equinox and vice versa likewise the position on 23rd september these two positions are equinox positions 
where the equator receives direct sunlight and the poles uh, that is northern and southern hemisphere receives receives slant sunlight so due due to this differential reception of sunlight uh, over a period of uh, year there are different seasons that occur that is uh, summer winter autumn and spring and due to these different seasons and that is uh, varying sun uh, sun's rays there are different pressure belts and wind systems created on the earth surface in the earth's atmosphere which results in uh, precipitation and various other climatic factors and also we know that earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit so ellipse is a is a figure which has two foci and i'm line passing through these two foci which is called as my major axis and this is the center and one more line this is called as minor axis ellipse is slightly different from a circle that ellipse as an eccentricity that is the ratio of major and minor axes okay let's not go deep into that but according to kepler's laws if sun is at one of the foci then earth revolves around the sun along this orbit that is along the elliptical orbit as a result there are two kinds of distances where the sun is closest to the earth that is here sorry the earth is closest to the sun and the earth is farthest from the sun this position is called as aphelion and the shortest position is called as perihelion and the respective distances are called as apogee and perigee so for the revolution of earth around the sun the apogee is 152.6 kilometers million kilometers whereas uh, the perigee is only about 147 million kilometers hence due to variations in these distances also the amount of sunlight received during these two periods of uh, these two time periods it is quite different for example apogee occurs on july 4th every year uh, that is around july 4th it might be one day uh, closer or farther and other 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 position called perigee occurs on jan 3rd or sometimes it might be jan 4 or 2nd or 5th it varies by one or two days so this point is called as apogee and this is uh, this position is called as perigee hence during jan 4 the earth would receive comparatively less amount of sunlight as it is farthest from the sun and during uh, jan 4 sorry during july 4 it will receive uh, less amount of sunlight whereas during jan 4 it will it will receive more amount of sunlight as it is closer to the sun so the major factors that influence the climatic conditions on earth are rotation of the sun uh, rotation of the earth along an axis tilted axis and revolution of earth around the sun even here the position of the tilted axis remains the same hence this results in change of seasons and also the earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit and elliptical orbit results to two positions one is apogee and perigee as as we already discussed and due to these factors there is different amount of heat received by the earth from the sun that is insulation varies with seasons rotation uh, that is day and days and nights and also position of the earth hence all these factors directly or indirectly influence climatic conditions on earth so we have discussed about days and nights nights uh, the, the occurrence of days and nights and seasons now let's see why the days daytime and nighttime varies with seasons for example let us consider the situation on june 21st that is summer solstice for the northern hemisphere we can see that due to this tilted axis the northern hemisphere receives direct sunlight whereas equator and southern hemisphere receives slightly slant sunlight and as a result we can see that this this one line which support uh, which uh, separates dark zone from bright zone is called as line of illumination if you can see this there is certain parts of uh, earth which are beyond this axis but still they are uh, that is they are brighter because of this tilt as a result these regions that is all these parts of the northern hemisphere here it's day the days are longer compared to nights in summer season the exact opposite happens in winter season this is due to majorly the tilt of earth this tilt by an angle of 23 and a half degree is the major reason between the different different times of day different lengths of days and nights during different seasons likewise if you see in the southern hemisphere we can see that though this region lies in the first half that is in the first half but still we can see that certain amount of a certain parts of this region 
is beyond the line line of illumination that is it is darker this is because of the tilt again you can see uh, the tilt has resulted in this uh, place which is in the first half also to may, to become darker and we can see that the northern uh, the, the arctic circle is under perpetual sunlight as it is tilted towards the sun's rays and the southern hemisphere is in perpetual night or um, there is no sunlight for about 6 months in this region in this whole region as the uh, as the sun, as the earth is tilted away from the sun and the re exact opposite happens in winter season where northern hemisphere uh, that is arctic circle is in darkness whereas uh, the antarctic circle will be in perpetual daylight so these important features are mainly due to the tilt of the earth and the revolution of this tilted earth around uh, around the sun this is one important concept called daylight saving time which is observed in few countries like usa canada etc and most of the countries in which are in higher latitudes like european nations uh, russia and few other nations india doesn't adopt this kind of uh, say daylight saving time we will see what this is due to differential amount of uh, that is different time uh, lengths of days during summer we know here in during, uh, daylight saving time zones they simply uh, advance their clocks by one hour so that they can they could work one hour earlier and and end the work one hour earlier so by the way by this um, process they, they are going to save one hour which which can be used for other recreational activities moreover by doing this in the night times or in the evenings they save one hour of uh, electricity by uh, going to bed one hour early because as the activities all the activities are completed one hour uh, earlier even going to bed will be one hour earlier as a result there is about one hour uh, one hour saving of electricity by due to switching off of uh, various lights etc so this is one productive step taken during uh, crisis situations like wars etc but even now this is uh, followed in some countries in india we don't follow this daylight saving system now let us take a look at other important concepts like greenish mean time standard time and international dateline all these concepts are mainly associated with longitudes longitudes are imaginary lines that pass from north pole to south pole so the longitudes are mainly used to determine time and date all across the globe and in a globalized world each country cannot fo follow its own time system or a date system so that it would lead to chaos where every country follows its own type of date and time system so to bring in uniformity the longitudes were uh, first envisaged and by long using longitudes we could determine uh, time and date with respect to a certain location and this certain location is greenwich uh, that is prime meridian which passes through greenwich in london in 1884 it was decided that this line would be the prime meridian as british were ruling all over the world they were dominant and they got to decide uh, which line would be the prime meridian and they cho chose the one which passed through royal astronomical observatory greenwich near london and to attain this uniform date and time system the earth was divided into 24 longitudes you know that earth is a sphere and from above it would look like a circle and circle would make an angle of 360 degree so now this 360 degree corresponds to 24 longitudes and each longitude corresponds to 1 hour so 24 longitudes corresponds to 24 hours or 1 day so when 360 degree corresponds to 24 longitudes then one longitude would correspond to we would correspond to 15 degree this one longitude is equal to 15 degree and that one longitude uh, length would be equal to 1 hour so we see that from this about uh 1 degree would correspond to 4 minutes so why is all this done we we know that in a, in a day there are 24 hours so it takes about 15 degree for an for earth uh, that is it the earth would cover an angle of 15 degree in this 1 hour so it would can cover total angle of 360 degree in 24 hours so by this measure we see that every 15 degree would correspond to 1 hour so from this international uh, sorry prime meridian we take 15 degrees at certain intervals that is 15 degree 13 30 degree 45 degree and then 60 degrees 75 etc and each this uh, longitude each of these major longitudes would uh, be equal to one hour so from 0 degree to 15 degree it would be one hour equivalent 
and 15 to 30 it would be 2 R equivalent and likewise 45 would correspond to 3 R equivalent likewise 5 uh, something like 75 degree would correspond to 5 R equivalent and all these longitudes to the east corresponds to times ahead of greenish mean time as earth rotates from west to east these are the ones regions eastern regions are the ones which receive earlier sunlight as a result these times are advanced to uh, green compared to greenish mean time so it is plus 1 degree plus 1 hour at 15 degree east and plus 3 hours at 45 degree east etc likewise the same thing happens minus 15 degree because they are behind greenish mean time so they are 15 degree minus 15 degree west likewise minus 45 degree west etc would correspond to uh, 3 hours that is minus 3 hours so by this we see that at 180 degree west it would be tall, minus 12 hours and at one, 180 degree east it would be plus 12 hours so now we want to tell uh, we want to see uh, consider time at certain point say about 90 degree east then we would see that 90 degree would correspond to 6 hours so it would be we call this as plus 6 hours GMT greenish mean time and if you take minus 90 degree west that is 90 degree west it would be like, similarly it would be minus 6 hours GMT so that from this we have arrived at a uniform time system where we could uh, tell the times of all the play locations based on greenish mean time and now like we have a uniform time system we would like to have a uniform date system too for this earth is divided into two parts one to the east of 180 degree uh, longitude and to the west of 180 degree longitude and we see that 180 degree east and west longitude coincides uh, to a single line which is exact opposite of the prime meridian and we see that unlike prime meridian the international date line is follows the zigzag path this is to see that the main regions corresponds to uh, belongs to certain regions would come under the same date line system for example this part of if we take a straight line it would pass through here and this would be separated from the mainland russia that is the time uh, the date uh, system for this uh, region would be separated from the mainland russia and this would be some sort of inconvenience as a result to keep all the major regions which are part of different countries in uniformity we have seen, uh, we have considered as exact international date line so now this region would come under Russian uh, date, line, date system and the region like Aleutian Islands which are form of uh, for part of Alaska which is a part of uh, USA would have their own kind of their date system if we cut this and give different date system for this and this then it would be uh, one day difference between these two regions and it would be some sort of convenience for administration etc and to make life easier we have seen that we have made this line a zigzag path and also there are certain islands in pacific region which are also uh, for example if they wanted to choose be to be in the eastern side they were kept in the eastern side by again curving this line and according to convenience we have uh, formed this international date line and if you just take a person consider a person traveling traveling from east to west and west to east scenarios let's see what happens see this is globe it is spherical in shape unlike the previous map we have seen which is uh, just a uh, two plane figure but now in a three dimensional view it would be different suppose it is greenish mean time is exactly opposite this line international date line and if a person travels towards west that is towards USA and other countries and crosses this international date line then he would lose a day sorry he would gain a day because we know that sun rises in the east that is it would rise in the east so the day would uh, start in the east and it would uh, end in the west so when a person moves from west to east you would gain a day and when a person moves from east to west you would lose a day so let's see why we see that from uh, this thing the prime meridian we take time as positive when moving towards east and we take time as negative when moving towards west for example if a person travels all this way long then it would be 12 hours ahead of GMT and if he moves in this direction then he would be 12 hours behind GMT hence there is about 24 hour difference to a point which is just east of GMT and to a point which is just west of GMT that is this whole path would take about 24 hours hence the time difference between east and west along this date line would be exactly 20, nearly 24 hours as a result 
this eastern part would be a day ahead whereas the western part would be a day behind with respect to international date line so all the regions to the east of gmt that is the prime meridian it would be they would be one day ahead that is this region would be one day ahead compared to this region which is west of gmt so all the eastern part would be one day ahead and the western part would be one day behind compared to this the eastern part for example if here it is 31st of december that is in the eastern part then in the western part it would be 30th of december that is they would be one day behind and soon when a person crosses from west to east that is from western side to the eastern side as in a sphere it would be just like this so you would gain a day that is from 30 30th to you would reach 31st day but same time when a person <coughs> starts from the west that is starts from the east and reaches west then you would shift from 31st day to 30th day so you would lose a day so this is how international date line works now let us look at standard time each country has its own standard time zone for example india has its standard time zone at 82 and a half degree east longitude that is it is 5 and half hours ahead of gmt that is plus 5 hours 30 minutes ahead of gmt and london as its sorry england as its uh, standard time zone along this uh, prime meridian likewise other countries like brazil would have its time zone along 45 degree west sometimes as the country's extent east west extent is too lengthy for example russia where it ranges about 165 degrees the difference between this longitude and this longitude would be 165 degrees here it is not feasible to have a single time zone as there would be huge time differences between one region to another so these countries have divided uh, they have got multiple time zones for example russia has about uh, nine time zones uh, time zones presently previously when it was ussr it had about 11 time zones likewise canada and usa which are also quite uh, have quite uh, horizontal extent that is from east to west extent they are thousands of kilometers in length so even in these countries it is not feasible to have a single time zone as there would be huge time differences between time, different uh, time, parts of the country that is uh, the sunrise and sunset 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 times would be much different as a result they have got multiple time zones for example usa has four and we considering alaska it has five and the canada has uh, four time zones just like us the mainland usa india is also has a longer extent for example it's spread across three uh, nearly 3000 kilometers but as a time difference between uh, these two these two regions that is gujarat and assam is only 2 hours we have chosen the central part that is uh, which passes uh, near uh, allahabad in uttar pradesh so the time difference between this one is 1 degree to the east uh, sorry 1 hour to the east and between gujarat and this allahabad is 1 hour to the west so uh, considerably we would, it would only be 1 hour difference but for russia and all it would be more than just 5 6 hours difference so they have got multiple time zones and these time zones are called as standard time zones few countries has only one standard time zone whereas few mighty countries like china russia usa canada etc has multiple time zones so the latitudinal extent of russia would be 165 degrees for example from this part from the eastern end to the western end that is eastern end to the western end it would be 165 degrees if suppose they chose something like that is passes from the center or the middle portion as is a time zone then the difference would be about 80 degree to the west and 80 degree degree to the east and 80 degree degree would correspond nearly to 4 and a half hour to 4 and a half to 5 hours of difference as a result for example if it's morning here it would be 7 o'clock and if the same line is considered as a time zone then here even here it would be 7 a.m but due to this extent when it is sunrise here it would be nearly sunset here so this kind of a system is not feasible hence they divided their countries into multiple time zones so that this part would correspond to this time zone and the next part would correspond to this time zone though it has some certain administrative barriers like uh, too much of confusion but still as these like countries are too lengthy they have to, they don't have another any other choice they have to follow this kind of a timeline now if you take at india it is spread about 30 degrees uh, it has 30 degrees east to west uh, extent that is 30 degrees would corresponds to nearly 1 plus 1 that is 2 hours because 15 plus 15 15 degrees corresponds to 1 hour so 30 degree would corresponds to 2 hours so the difference between arunachal pradesh and the parts of gujarat would be about 2 hours 
for example if it the sun rises here at 6 o'clock it would be still darker here in gujarat at 6 o'clock and here it, the sunrise would be at 8 o'clock so it is a considerably uh, considerable difference but still due to various constraints like illiteracy and other uh, uh, administrative uh, problems india decided to have a single time zone that is at 82 and half degree east and before independence india has something called as chai bagan time system that is eastern parts that is assam arunachal pradesh manipur etc where tea plantations were tea plantations were ex- extensive the britishers here followed chai bagan time uh, time zone that is uh, where this time zone is one hour ahead of mainland india's time zone so they gained one hour so one hour was a productive hour for this region as a result they could uh, consider daylight saving system where uh they could save the energy f- uh, that is night time burning of lamps by 1 hour so that uh and also productive time would be improved by 1 hour but during uh, recently with the prime uh, chief minister of assam raising this issue that is tarun gogoi raised this is- issue and asked that the north northeastern state especially assam would have a, to have a different time zone which is called as chai bagan time zone chai is tea and bagan are the tea planters so the time zone decided for tea planters was called as chai bagan time zone and they wanted this kind of a time zone because they would ha- get one pro- they w- they could save one productive hour but indian government did not accept for this and the assam government said they would follow their own time system where they would be one hour ahead of mainland india's time system but it doesn't make a difference because instead of starting school said they would simply start uh, school at 9 9 9 am so they would obviously gain a day just simply by t- uh, choosing two time zones it would lead to more confusion among the literate population of this country